Hello everyone, Sean Ansari here from Reality Forge presenting our first Unreal Engine 5 community challenge. In this challenge, we're asking the community to build a world between two pillars in Unreal Engine and render out a video that's going to be part of an epic montage of environments with the best environments winning prizes. Whether you're an experienced 3D artist or somebody looking to explore the world of real-time 3D with Unreal Engine, this challenge is open to all. In this video, we're going to be learning how to download and get started with Unreal Engine along with registering your entry and how to use the challenge project to produce a video which you may then submit. After filling out the registration form, we're going to click on download Unreal Engine 5, which is going to take us to the unrealengine.com download page. Now, before you download the Epic Games launcher, it's a good idea to register for an Epic Games account as you will need this account to sign into the launcher. Next, we're going to click on download launcher, which is going to begin downloading the setup files to install the Epic Games launcher on your computer. Upon running the Epic Games Launcher, this is what you're going to see. On the left here, we have Unreal Engine. Clicking on this will change the launcher into the launcher that you will be using to download and get started with Unreal Engine. We're going to go straight into the Library tab over here, and you may not have any versions of Unreal Engine installed already on your computer. If you see nothing here, that's okay. Pressing the plus icon will allow you to choose a version that you want to download. This particular challenge is using Unreal Engine 5, so 4.27 and earlier may not work. Selecting Unreal Engine 5 will then show you an install button over here. Clicking that will then begin the download process. After it downloads and completes its installation, it will change from install to launch. And then you'll see something similar to what I have here. Next, we're going to press launch, which is going to bring up the Unreal Project Browser. Now this process may take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your computer, but generally shouldn't take very long. Once the Unreal Project Browser opens, you can choose a template to serve as the starting point for your first project. I'm going to be using the third person template. Here is where you can choose where your project is saved on your computer. You want to make sure you have at least 20 to 50 GB of space, as when we start adding things like the mega scans, your project folder will start increasing in size. We want to make sure we're using blueprints, target platform, desktop, quality preset maximum, starter content enabled, and ray tracing disabled. Here's where you can also choose a name for your project. Anything is generally okay here, provided it has no spaces. Once you've chosen a name for your project, chosen where it's going to be saved on your computer, click create to begin assembling all the project files and open the editor. This is the Unreal Engine editor. To the top left here, you have a floppy disk icon to save your level. To the right of this, we have the select modes drop-down menu where you can change to landscape, foliage, or modeling modes. To the right of this, we have the quickly add to project drop down menu where you can quickly add shapes by dragging and dropping it into your environment or things like lights. To the right of this, we have the blueprints and the cinematics menu, which we're going to use later in this quick start tutorial. To the right of this, we have the play and editor button. Now, depending on what starter template you chose, clicking this will turn your editor into a playable game. Clicking again will allow you to use the WSAD keys along with your mouse to interact with your starter template. To exit from this mode, we can press the escape button, which will then return us to what we had earlier. Now to navigate your viewport, you're going to want to click and hold the right mouse button to look around and use the W, S, A and D keys to move forward, back, left and right. You can also use the E key to go up and the Q key to kind of hover down. To the extreme right of this, we have the settings menu and underneath this, we have the outliner. The outliner is a list based representation of all the assets in your environment. So if I was to go and use the quickly add to quickly add to project menu to drop down a cube here, you can see that cube gets added to my outliner as well. Clicking on the cube and pressing the delete button will remove it from my outliner. And I can do this with any object that's been placed in this world. Selecting an object and pressing the F key will snap and zoom to it or simply double clicking an object in your outliner will do the same. So it will try and basically frame the object you've just double clicked on. So if I was to double click on this cube over here, it'll try and frame this. If I was to double click on this SM cube, which is the floor, we can see this by the orange outline around the entire floor. If I double click on this, Unreal will frame that in the view. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about how to kind of fly around this viewport, how to use the outliner. Now let's talk about the details panel. The details panel gives you information about the object you have currently selected. 
So if I was to select this blue cube over here, I can see its name and I can see its location, rotation and scale. Now let's look at some of the tools that you have at your disposal to help you place and manipulate objects in your environments. I'm going to use the quickly add to project menu to put a cube in my environment. And then to move this cube around, I can click and drag on this white sphere to move my cube around. If I want to constrain my move to one axis, I can click and drag on the blue arrow to constrain my move to the Z axis, the green arrow for the Y axis, and the red arrow for the X axis. If I want to constrain my move to the XY plane, I can click and drag on this area between the two arrows, which will constrain it to the XY plane, and do the same for the ZX plane as well. If I wanted to rotate my object, I can click over here to change to the rotate tool and then do the same. So constraining my rotation to the Z axis would be clicking and dragging on this blue disc, clicking and dragging on the green disc for the Y axis, and then clicking and dragging on the red disc for the X axis. Going over into the scale mode follows the same rules. Clicking and dragging in the center scales my object uniformly. Clicking and dragging on the red handle over here scales my object on the X axis, the green handle for the Y axis, and the blue handle for the Z axis. The move scale and rotate tool all have shortcuts and we can see this by hovering over them over here. W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. To the right of this, we have the ability to cycle between local and global gizmos. This means that, for example, if this cube is rotated and if I press the move tool, you can still see that the X arrow is pointed in the global X. But if I click on this globe, this then changes the gizmo to a local gizmo and now the X is pointed in the local X of this object. Let's go back to global and let's also reset our rotation by pressing this arrow over here. To the right of this, you have the snapping tools. By default, snapping is enabled. Snapping means the way this object is kind of jumping and not moving smoothly. If I put snapping off, this object will now move smoothly if I put it back on, you can see that jumping begins again. We can control the amount of jumping that occurs or the amount of snapping that occurs by clicking on the number icon or the number on the right of the snapping tool that we want to change. So if you wanted to change how much the move tool snaps, we can click on this 10 over here and you can see 1, 5, 10, 50. These are all increments at which the snapping will occur. So 100 being a lot and 10 being far less. Same goes for rotation. We can disable rotation snapping so we get smooth rotation. And if we re-enable rotation snapping, we get snaps at 10 degrees. You can again change this by clicking on this button over here. And the same goes for scale. To the right of this, you have a camera speed icon. This is going to control how fast the camera flies around the level. So if you feel a new kind of experience that you are flying around too fast, so the camera is not, uh, you're not able to control the camera, you can reduce the camera speed to a lower number and then it will move a lot slower. Next, let's talk about materials in Unreal Engine. I'm going to use the quickly add to project menu to place a cube, a sphere, and a cone. Now to assign materials to these, we're going to use the content drawer, which is accessible on the bottom left here by clicking on this button and then navigating to the starter content folder because we enabled that when we made this project and then going to materials and you can see a range of materials here that Unreal Engine gives you as part of the starter content to get you started. Now, if I wanted to assign the stone cobblestone material to this cube here, I can simply drag and drop this material on that mesh. Now you may have noticed the content drawer kind of vanished. You can reveal it again by pressing this button or by pressing control space. If you want the content drawer to be a permanent part of your UI, you can press the dock and layout button which will ensure that it becomes part of your user interface. Now I can simply drag and drop any material I want on the mesh that I want it assigned to. So a chrome material, a gold material, a stone material, or even this hex style material over here. Additionally, you also get access to the Quixel Mega Scans, which come free to use with Unreal Engine. To access these amazing photorealistic materials and 3D assets, we're going to go over to Window, Quixel Bridge, and you can see you can get instant access to all of these great materials and assets directly inside of the engine. I'm going to navigate over to surfaces and then choose stone and click on this slate stone wall over here. Then all I have to do is choose the quality I want. In my case, I'll choose high 
click on this download button, give it a few moments to download, and then this blue add icon will then become clickable. All right, our download's complete, and now all I have to do is click on this blue add button, and it gets added to my project. Now we can close bridge, and we can see now inside our content folder, we have a Megascans folder and a Surfaces folder, and this is the Surface we just downloaded. Quixel sets everything up for you, so you can just simply drag this material and place it on any mesh that you have in your scene. If you've changed the scale of your shape, you may encounter a problem where the Quixel Megascan textures appear stretched. So I'm just going to take this cube, scale it up to give it an appearance of a ball, and then assign my Quixel Megascan texture to it. Now you may notice that the bricks here appear more stretched than they do down here. So we can remedy this by double clicking on our Quixel Megascan material and just seeing, identifying a feature at the proper proportions, right? So I'm looking at these two rocks here. And what I'm going to do now is click on tiling and offset, and then just increase the amount of times this tiles on the X axis. So I'll increase this and that looks about right. Something like this. You also have a range of other options that you can go in and change in real time, such as color. So if you wanted to tint your rocky material, give it a blue tint or a purple tint or a green tint, you can do so in real time as well, along with a range of other options. And with that, our crash course is complete. Now let's go take a look at the demo project that you have for this challenge and learn how to use it. To download the template project, simply navigate over to our website and then head on over to the Winter Unreal Engine 5 challenge. Scroll down over to step four and click on download challenge project. You'll then be greeted with a couldn't preview file. There was a problem with the preview. That's okay. Click on download and it's about 900, 939 megabytes to be specific. Click on download anyway to begin the download process. This will then begin downloading a zip file, which you will then have to extract on your computer to gain access to the template project. After downloading the zip file, I'm going to go ahead and extract it. So we will get access to the challenge project. Inside this folder, you will find a novemberchallenge.u project file, which when double clicked on will open the project along with adding it to your Unreal Engine launcher. When the project file opens, there's some instructions for you over here, along with some technical specifications for what the final video should be for submission. Now, the main thing in this project is this camera right here. This camera is going to move between both of these rings, which are going to serve as transition points for everyone's environments. To see the cinematic, I'm going to open my content drawer navigate to the cinematics folder and there'll be a single cinematic file there which when double clicked will give you a timeline that you can scrub back and forth all the camera animations been done for you so please don't change any of this to render this out i'm going to click on this clapper icon here which is going to bring up the render movie settings i'm using image sequence jpeg because i'm going to stitch all my images together in davinci resolve now we need to make sure that our resolution is correct and the images are going to a directory that we can access i'm using the render folder on my desktop. I'm just going to hit select folder, capture movie, and then it's going to ask me to save my environment, which I'm going to then choose save selected. When the movie starts rendering, it's going to give you a preview on the top left and give you some information on the bottom right that it's capturing the video. When the capture completes, it'll also give you a link that you can click to open the capture folder. Here we can see there's an image for every frame in our animation, 210 to be specific. I'm now going to open DaVinci Resolve and simply all I need to do is drag this render folder into my timeline like this. Now, one thing you need to make sure of here is that sometimes you may run into a frame rate issue. So before importing your images, click on the gear icon and change this to 30 frames a second. Because if you remember inside Unreal, we also used 30 frames per second. So with the timeline set correctly, I can now drag and drop my render folder in here and move this to the beginning of my timeline. Now, when I press the play icon or the space bar, my animation plays and I have a video file. To render this out to an MP4, all I need to do is click on this little rocket here, choose MP4. Again, choose a directory where my MP4 is going to be saved. This time I'm going to choose the desktop, hit save, and then give it a name, submission. Make sure the settings match what your timeline is, in my case, 30 frames per second, 1920 by 1080 HD, and here I've chosen the best quality settings. Add to render queue, render all, 
And now you have a file that you can then submit for the competition. Now let's talk about actually building an environment and look at some of the tools that you have within Unreal to build an interesting world between these two pillars. Now that we know the basics, let's use this project to build a world between these two pillars. I'm going to first go ahead and remove all of this information by first clicking on this decal icon and then pressing delete on my keyboard. I'm also going to remove all of this information by clicking and then shift clicking all of the text render actors and then pressing delete again on my keyboard. We're also going to go ahead and delete the test objects by clicking and then pressing delete for each one of them. Now we have a blank slate to work on. Let's move our camera over here and begin building our world. Before starting work on any environment, it's very important that we gather reference. A great place to do this is the art station. So for example, over here, if I search Canyon, I will get all this amazing art from these talented artists that have canyons in them. I can then pick the ones I like the most and then use a tool called Pure Ref to help me build a visual reference board by simply dragging and dropping artwork into the frame. You can spend as much time as you want on this because reference gathering is not only for artwork that you like. It can be references for foliage, references for lighting, references for camera framing, references for large structures, small structures, and so on and so forth. So the more references you have, the better guidance you will get when you are building your environments. After you are done with gathering references, the next step is to build what's known as an asset zoo. So we're going to click on our floor, hold Alt to make a copy of this and drag it along the green or the Y axis. In this quick start video, I'm going to be populating my asset zoo with the Quixel Megascans. The Quixel Megascans are a free to use with Unreal Engine library of photo scan assets and materials. To access the Quixel Megascans, we're going to go to Window and then Quixel Bridge. Once this is loaded, we're going to select Collections and then Environment. Choose the type of environment you want to make. In my case, Natural, and then I'm going to go and select the canyons of Utah. To download any one of these mega scans, simply click on the asset and then choose the quality that you want. Once you've chosen this, simply click on download and then this blue add button will become clickable once the download is complete. Clicking on it will give you a pop-up like this. And then what you want to do is look for the light blue line over here, indicating that this is a static mesh. Simply then drag and drop that into your scene. And then you want to categorize your asset zoo from large to small. And I'm going to go and download all the assets I want to work with right now. I've gone and downloaded all the mega scans I found interesting and I've categorized them from large all the way down to very small mega scans. I've also set up these surface previews over here. To do this, simply add a sphere static mesh into your scene or your asset zoo, scale it up to a value of six, and then apply any surface mega scan to this. To get surface mega scans again in bridge, just filter this by surfaces and you'll get all these surface mega scans here, which when you download pretty much the same way like we downloaded the assets, select the quality, and then download and then add it to your project, you will get a surfaces folder in your mega scans. Opening this, you'll get all the different mega scan surfaces that you downloaded. And then opening this again will allow you to simply drag and drop the material on the static mesh, just like we did earlier. So with that done, our asset zoo is now complete and we can now move on to building our environment between these two pillars for the challenge. Next, let's set up our cameras. In Unreal Engine, if you select any camera, you get a preview of what that camera sees on the bottom right. But if you deselect your camera, this goes away. So when you select your camera, click on this pin preview icon over here. That way, even if you deselect your camera, this preview remains in your UI. Next, let's position our camera. So I'm going to select my camera, click and drag on this red arrow and position the camera exactly where my environment begins so that I can see exactly what the camera sees, which is going to help me design my environment. Next, let's work on the floor. So I'm going to click on this floor, scale it up to 32 and move it forward because our camera only moves a little bit back here. And this gives me a whole lot more real estate to work with when designing my environment. Next, let's assign this mega scan to it. And you will notice this weird glitching effect over here, which we can fix by selecting this flow and moving it a little lower. Now you're probably also noticing the styling issue, but this isn't very apparent at ground level. So you can see over here, the tiling isn't very visible. And if you wanted to see the entire viewport from our camera's point of view, we can click on perspective and then cine camera actor. So you can see over here, the tiling is not so bad. So we're going to go ahead and eject 
and then again click on our camera and pin preview so we're now ready to begin designing our environment i'm going to use this mega scan alt and drag and place it roughly what looks interesting to me so maybe someplace over here maybe something like that now this mega scan has this weird ring underneath it you can fix this by simply moving the mega scan into the floor the mega scans are designed to work like this with intersections with other objects so it doesn't matter if it's going into the floor it will still look really nice that's why the mega scans are so awesome okay let's select this one alt and drag rotate it i'm using the shortcut keys that we discussed earlier for move scale and rotate you can find these up here so q w e and r so let's move this into position as well maybe somewhat here so we have our two side canyons in position like so and i'm just going to make copies of this so alt and drag rotate it and like i said earlier if your mega scans are intersecting one another it's okay they'll still look great you can see like this Okay, so we'll alt and drag, rotate it. And let's put this into position like so. Okay, so you can see they look great. Now let's also maybe use this one. So alt and drag. Let's maybe position this over here and then again i'm just going to alt and drag and you can also use right click mirror y to perform the same thing what we were doing earlier with the rotate tool just saves you a few clicks okay so this is what we have so far i am going to break symmetry a little bit here by moving this a little bit in and maybe somewhat here just to kind of hide that Maybe we can move this one a little bit further in just to break symmetry a little bit, make them look a little bit different to break the illusion that we've just mirrored this over here. Again, I'm going to check this from my camera's point of view by clicking perspective and then cine camera actor. And this is what we have. Okay, so let's eject, pin that preview back again and let's begin working forward. So next, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build some sort of geometry back here. So again, we can just alt and drag, rotate this. And because this is further away and it won't be as visible, we're going to scale this up to a factor of two. Okay, let's put this a little bit into the ground. And we have some canyons back here now. Okay, so maybe I will make another copy of this. and then another copy over here. Now, if you're worried about using the same asset again and again, again, you can use a different one. We we'll just rotate this one over. And let's move this over here. And again, don't worry too much if they're intersecting, it's fine. The main thing is that you have fun with this and you get to experience how quickly we're able to create things using the mega scans from pixel okay so this is what we have so far maybe i will move this a little lower just to build this sort of line here but this is what we're looking at this is what we're dealing with okay let's pin that preview again and let's build another layer behind this maybe we can even use this mega scan this one seems a little interesting so let's rotate this over scale it to two maybe not even two maybe we can use 1.5 got something interesting like that there so again some difference between the two sides over here let's see if this can be can be used someplace here so i've moved my camera a little bit if you're worried about moving your camera by the way one easy fix for this would be to simply right click transform lock actor movement that way you can't accidentally move your camera so now if i accidentally click and move my camera won't move as much Okay, so we go into my camera. Let's select the actor I just had, which is over here. 
So again, not much visible with this actor. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to discard it. This isn't looking too good. So maybe down here we can try it. See how this looks. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But anyway, let's progress. So we've got these two ready to go. Um, next, let's work on some larger geometry behind this. So I'm just going to alt and drag. Again, I'm using the bigger pieces back here because of the fact that these are larger mega scans, the geometry on them, the features on them are better when scaled up. So if you were to scale something like this up, you won't get the same effect as if you were to scale a larger mega scan up because the geometry and the features on them are very different. Comparing this to, for example, something like this, the features are quite different. So let's uh, rotate this over, maybe scale it up to a value of six. And then I'm going to go check what my camera sees. Okay, so this is what we have taking shape. We're just going to move this back here. Maybe something like here. And then also make a copy of this. Let's move this back here. Just trying to fill up our our viewport like this. So we're getting this opening into a larger landscape. So we have one rock piece over here and one rock piece over there. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We're now building, building upwards. And uh, let's select this. And now I'm going to go for these really large pieces back here. So let's maybe scale this up to 15. Yeah, I think I need to go a little larger with this. So maybe 30, 35. Yeah, that's a little, that looks good. Because the further you move something in Unreal, you're going to start to see fogging effects on it, which really helps sell that this is a, a large kind of canyon piece. Okay, so let's rotate this over like this. Maybe put this here. Okay, so we have this. I'm going to copy this over, rotate it. Like so. We have this over here. And uh, let's maybe fill this up a little bit. So again, copy it. Let's push this back here. And maybe line these two up. Like they're part of the, the same rock face. Okay, so that's what we have. And then maybe I'll make another copy of this as well. something like that. Okay, so we have these uh, rock features over here. Yeah, maybe something like this. Okay, so we've got our large pieces in place. This is what it looks like. You can see very quickly with the mega scans, we're able to uh, quickly build something that looks interesting with uh, large features, small features, and then we can keep moving up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to add some large towering structures, so maybe like this asset. So I'm just going to right click and go edit copy. Click on this, press F. So we scale right up to it. Okay, I'm going to increase my camera speed to six. And then maybe right click, edit, paste here and scale this up to five, 10, 15, 20 move it into the ground here, put it at the edge. And let's see what this looks like from our camera's point of view, which is why the camera's point of view is so important. So let's go with 30, 35 seems okay. So I'm just going to again move this in a little bit. Let's try taking this higher. So 40, 45, 40 looks good. We have this large towering structure over here. Okay, and then we're going to make a copy of this, move it here. 
and just change it up a bit, make it look a little different. So you have these large towering structures over here. Make another one maybe over here. But I'd still like to see a little bit of the skyline in this one. So you could have something like that. So you can see just by rotating it, you're able to create interesting shapes as well. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. We've got these four towering structures. We've got this big landscape piece over here. Maybe we can even create another copy of this. Not like that. These uh, pieces sticking out. Let's even try one last one. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Maybe I might scale this up to 45. And we've now built some interesting landscape. Now, what you can do with this challenge is if you want to build some more depth in your scene, you can right click and transform this around the Z. As long as the sphere or the ring stays the same, it's okay. Now I can, I have more real estate to work with. I have more visual space to work with versus just having this pillar that's blocking a lot of the potential things I could add back there. Again, it's optional. Just thought I'd mention it in this tutorial. Okay, next, uh, let's go ahead and now start adding some of these interesting features to our side sort of uh, these, these uh, structures over here. So I'm going to slow down my camera a little bit. So maybe a value of four. And uh, let's grab this, so Alt and drag. Again, I think we should get our camera's perspective. So we grab this, kind of position this over here. Again, don't worry too much about if the mega scans are intersecting one another. They're designed to work that way. Okay, so we have this over here. And um, let's get this one oops that's the same so we'll get this one move it on the left side okay let's see what that looks like okay so i think this needs to move a little bit in like so and let's eject this and let's go and put some more pieces in okay so i'm going to use maybe this asset let's try using this one and kind of place this over here maybe even scale this up to two Kind of position it like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So we have this. And then let's go again, add some more detail in here. So we'll take maybe this one. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So we've got a few interesting pieces uh, as we're moving down. I think what we could potentially do is use this one as well. Now this one has a different color, but we'll fix that later. Now, now I think we're just worried about just trying to get the detail, the level of detail that we want into this piece or the framing. Okay, so we've got this, we we'll move this over as well and rotate it. Something like that. Now with regards to the color, because this is a different shade with the mega scans, you can go and click on any material and then simply with the material open, we're just going to go to tint, click on the color, and then just shade this a little bit closer to what we're seeing here. So I'm just going to go ahead and there you go. That looks a lot better. And the result, I still feel it's a little yellow. So I'm going to go
yeah i think i'm happy about that okay so let's go and see this is what we have so far now let's uh, go and put in some assets that are going to sort of draw in the viewer because we do have this deep canyon that's been created but there's nothing else but this so to speak so what i've gone ahead and done is i went to the quixel bridge and i downloaded a statue so you can see if i search here statue there is this roman statue that i downloaded i'm just going to switch this over to nanite because i already have it in the project and i'm simply going to drag and place this in the scene it's quite small so i'm going to scale this up to maybe 350 let's move this all the way back here so maybe this was a statue of some sorts in our scene in our story Let's try 500, 600, 700, 800. Okay, that looks pretty interesting. Let me see where that stands with our environment. Yeah, it's pretty close to the exit over there, so that'll be okay. Okay, so this is our statue, so to speak. We'll move it a little bit off the center so that ring stays clear. Again, not something you have to do, but uh, just something I had in mind. Now, the statue itself is looking fine. Maybe what we could also do is add like a planet in the background, maybe like a moon of sorts. So one easy way to do this would be to take a sphere and uh, really scale this up. So we're going to eject our camera. Let's uh, pin our camera's preview. And then with the sphere selected, I'm just going to scale this up to about 100. And let's move it back. Again, add another zero in there. Move it back even some more. Add another zero. And the idea is if you move it back further enough, it's going to start getting its own. It's going to give that lighting off that it's really far away. So maybe something like this. Let's change this to five. Maybe someplace here. Let's see what that looks like in our camera. Okay, so we have this weird moon in the background. And I think maybe we could make our statue a little smaller. So maybe here instead. No, I think this looks kind of interesting. Okay. So with our statue in place and when the moon in place, uh, the moon inverted commas, so to speak, the next thing we should work on is adding a little bit more detail down here along with foliage and then exporting our cinematic. Okay, so we're just going to go and add some of these smaller pieces down here. So again, right click, edit, paste here. Let's rotate this. Slow my camera down a little bit. And then let's maybe get back into our camera view. To X this. And kind of move it into the ground. Okay, so again, increasing my cam camera speed and just kind of accelerating this process, finding pieces that I want to use, edit, paste here 2x and then just kind of filling this up okay let's go here and grab this rock maybe back here 2x this as well let's kind of put these rocks back here and again just have fun with this there's no right no wrong way to do this that's the whole purpose of this challenge to prove and to demonstrate rather to people that uh, unreal engine is a lot of fun and you can make things really quickly and if you were thinking of getting started uh, this challenge is kind of going to be uh, a way to kind of give you an incentive to start uh, creating creating with UE. Okay, uh, so let's copy this over. Okay, 
Again, just keeping an eye on where these things are on my camera. So let's go and keep checking. This looks kind of interesting. We now have some geometry that's closer up to the camera. So I'm not going to put this like this, maybe like this, because that back edge is visible. But we do have some rocks here now that are kind of breaking that flat ground that we have. So again, copy. Let's paste something here. See what our camera sees. Scale this up to 2x. Okay, and then maybe let's grab this over back here. Maybe we could move this over here. Okay. And then uh, maybe just a few more because again, I don't want to get too much into the detail adding aspect. I just want to demonstrate uh, how fast you can create with, with Unreal. Okay. So let's put this over here, edit paste here. And let's 2x this, move this down here, these rocks. Maybe we could even place this close to the camera, like over here. Guess we have some rocks that we're dealing with. Let's try moving this over here. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And uh, finally, let's also grab this uh, fireplace. Maybe before this is some sort of uh, campsite. Okay, and then we can maybe put this in the middle of our scene. Okay, so we've added some basic ground level mega scans. Of course, this is very basic, but this is designed to give you an idea how you can create with the Quixel mega scans. You can come up with some interesting shapes, some interesting forms, uh, like this shape, for example. Maybe I can use this around my gateway, like this over here. Okay, so I've got this and then maybe we can use this as well. Okay, let's see what our scene looks like. This is what our scene looks like right now. Maybe we can move this a little lower into the ground so it kind of matches and then of course break this by putting this here and then hit the save icon. The next thing we're gonna do is work on some sort of plantation or some sort of foliage in here. So we're going to go over to foliage. And if you don't have any foliage added to your project, you can get some from the Quixel bridge. So I'm going to go over to collections. In fact, let's go to home, 3D plants. And over here, I'm just going to choose, uh, in fact, maybe we could check the collections out. So environment, natural. Let's go and see if there's any, um, plants in the Utah pack that we downloaded earlier. So you can see there's quite a few plants here that we can work with. I'm going to use these dead shrubs. So high quality, again, keep an eye on the quality because if you download all high quality assets, you will run into a performance issue. So we're going to hit add to project. And then simply, I'm just going to go ahead and place these over here. Okay, so not using foliage mode, but I'm just going to go ahead and place these these uh, assets over here around the rocks, maybe 2x. This can be maybe 3x. Actually, 2x is fine. So we have some uh, tree growth here. Let's slow this down a little bit. Put this over here. Put one more little shrubs that are growing underneath here. Okay. And uh, let's go to foliage, select all of them, hit paint. And then we can kind of just pepper this, this area like this. Okay, so with that complete, let's have a look at what our environment looks like. So I'm just gonna to go to perspective, cine camera actor, this is what we're seeing. Now let's change the lighting a little bit. So we're gonna click control L and I'm just going to move the sun over to this position maybe something like this, where we're getting that 
nice rim on the planet. We're also getting a nice rim on our statue over here. So let's see if we a little bit more experimentation. I think this is the, the one I'm going to go with like this. So again, just tweak your environment to a point that you're happy with like this, for example. And when you're satisfied with your overall scene, you want to go to cinematics and then cinematic. This is going to give you a project that you can hit the play button on and you can see your environment is now playing. Okay, so to render this out, I'm going to click on this, render this movie to video or image frame sequence. I'm going to choose JPEG and then I'm going to make sure that this goes to my desktop and then render, select folder, capture movie, make sure it's at 1920 by 1080, which is the specifications of this project. Capture movie, save selected. When you click on this on the top left here, you'll see your video being rendered. And on the bottom right here, you'll get a notification saying capture finished, along with a link that you can click to open the capture folder. You should have 210 JPEGs here. And now let's move into DaVinci Resolve to finish this project. DaVinci Resolve is an industry standard post-production tool. While it's mostly known for color grading, you can edit, do sound design, motion graphics, and even visual effects in it. And best of all, it's free. You can download the light version for free by clicking on this button and then choosing the platform of your choice. After it's been installed, this is the menu you're going to see. We're going to click on Untitled Project. When the project opens up, we have to change DaVinci's frame rate. By default, DaVinci is going to start at 24 frames per second, which is different from the 30 frames per second we rendered out from Unreal. To change this, click on the gear icon and change your timeline frame rate from 24 to 30 and then hit save. Next, we're going to go over to the edit tab and then open the folder that we rendered out our images to. In my case, render on the desktop. You can simply drag and drop this on your timeline, which is going to stitch all the JPEGs together to make a video file that you can play. Now we know that this is playing correctly and running at the right frame rate because this ends at exactly seven seconds. Once you're happy with this, you can go over to the color grading tab, make some minor adjustments, change the gain, change the gamma, the lift, and even add some color grading post-production effects such as LUTs and various effects that you get with DaVinci Resolve. Once you're happy with your overall video, click on this little rocket over here and then choose H.264. Name your file, submission in my case. Make sure all the settings are correct and then hit add to render queue, choose desktop, save, and then render all. This will then turn all the JPEGs we rendered earlier into a video file that you can then submit for the competition.